Hey there, happy day 27 of No Nonsense November. Sharon Horn Elstrom here, sharing a tool a day that I've learned over my 60 years of life uh, that has helped me to survive and thrive through a whole lot of challenges, a whole lot of changes, a whole lot of crazy chaotic times, not unlike what we're going through in 2020. Uh, today, I can't believe I've waited this long to talk about this one because I think about it every single day. It is the process and the importance and the barriers to and questions to ask of critical thinking. Thinking for yourself. Critical thinking to me is defined by thinking for myself. We think for ourselves when we think critically. When we let other people think for us, which there's a whole lot of group thinking, a whole lot of that kind of thinking going on right now, at least in America and actually the whole wide world, we give away our personal power. We need to always remember nothing matters except how it impacts us and what it means to us and how we define it so that we know how to respond to it, how to react to it, how to make decisions and choices that are in our own best interests long term. So we're not just willy nilly making decisions. So I'm going to cheat today. I'm not cheating, but I'm, I'm telling you critical thinking and thinking for ourselves is so important to me. I have done a bunch of research on it. So I actually created some notes that I need my magnifying glass to read, but I want to make sure that I don't miss a thing because that's how important it is. And that's especially how it's always been important and people will tell us it's not important, but that's why I'm here to, to remind you that people don't always tell us what's in our best interest. They always tell us what's in their best interest. Let me get you, give you an example. Critical thinking, of course, means it's the objective analysis and evaluation of an issue in order to form a judgment. So it's, it's looking at something, and I'm going to share the skills that's required in order to form your own opinion your own judgment as to what it means and what it means to you now think of school i don't know about you but i went to school for a really long time i went to school a lot a long time in a lot of different environments um and i learned pretty early on but it wasn't actually until my junior year in college that i really learned this lesson and the aha moments that um our teachers are there to teach us something but they have a, a hidden agenda. They're not really there just to teach us this, the topic that they're teaching us. They're there to teach us their way of thinking so that we give them and repeat back to them the answers that they want in order to give us the grade that we want. And it literally, I remember my, my, I struggled a little bit with college. I grew up in a small town where, where learning in school came really easy for me. And then I went to college in a great big city, big college that, and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger colleges that I realized that the professors and teachers didn't really care one bit about whether I personally as an individual learned or not. I was just a, you know, another one of their 2000 or their thousand students. And I was just one more. And I realized it was my responsibility and up to me to get the information and the knowledge and to get out of that class what I wanted to get out of it. And they, did, they didn't care. They didn't care what grade I got individually. Now, some teachers did, some do, they always do, but the vast majority do not. It's like anything else. They are there to do their job and they'll, if they're smart, they, they do their job well and they serve the majority of the people, but there's always people on either end of the spectrum that fall off because they're not participating and not learning or they don't choose not to, or, and there's always people in the same class or same spectrum that excel, right? And you get to choose what group you're going to be in. Are you going to be in the top 10%, the middle, you know, 80% or the bottom 10%? We always have that choice. We don't always know that we do. and We don't always think that we do, but that's what critical thinking shows us. We actually do. But that's my, my most glaring example of, you know, you take a test, you write an essay question and you get zero points because the teacher didn't like the way you thought for yourself and answered the question even though it's a it's an a subjective question your answer could be just as right as theirs but in their opinion their judgment your answer is wrong because it doesn't agree with the answer they wanted to see anybody ever had that happen to them or experienced that yes so what's the purpose of critical thinking why do we want to even be critical thinkers why do we want to think for ourselves well the purpose of critical thinking is to ensure people are able to think clearly and rationally about what to do and what to believe. Wow, is that a big statement right now? People are able to think clearly and rationally in order so that they can decide what to do and what to believe 
for themselves, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get into some barriers and things because this is so mind blowing. So what are some of the skills you need to be a critical thinker? What are the, some of the things you want to do? Well, let's, let's talk about how do you improve critical thinking? Do you want to talk about skills first or critical thinking? Let's talk about some of the skills. There's a lot of skills required to be a critical thinker. And when I read this list, I'm like, wow, this is overwhelming. I need to be able to do all these things in order to be a critical thinker. But the truth is, the majority of these things we've been doing all of our life. We've just been doing them subconsciously. Uh, so we need to be, skills required are observation, analysis, interpretation, reflection, evaluation, inference, explanation, problem solving, decision making, which we've talked about, good communication, creative thinking, open-mindedness, asking thoughtful questions, and then if you're working with other people with respect to um, critical thinking, teamwork, being able to work on a team, and then also being able to evaluate yourself and say, how am I contributing or not contributing to the critical thinking, the problem solving, decision making process? We talked about that a couple of days ago, problem solving and decision making. It's a, all of these, by the way, all these tools are huge topics. I, I'm sure we could easily do an entire day workshop on every one of these tools that we're discussing, but I'm trying to do it in a short, compact period of time. So how do you critically think? There's a six step process for this. Surprise, there is a three, five, six, eight, nine, 20 step process for absolutely anything and everything you can imagine wanting to do or wanting to improve in your life. So what are the six steps that, that I found on Google that they say how to improve your critical thinking? Number one, become more self-aware. Know yourself, isn't that the first step of everything? Number two, understand your mental process. Number, you know, so what are your processes? What do you usually do? How do you think normally about things? Number three, develop foresight. Now, I think that's a, a tough one. Uh, I think that's kind of like saying develop imagination. You can do it, but it's it's hard for a lot of people. Number five, practice active listening. Listen. We learn when we listen. We don't ever usually learn when we're talking. We learn when we listen. Step five, ask questions. And step six, evaluate existing evidence. How many people are right now, and just answer silently in your head, eva are are spouting off and I'm guilty of this as well. I do this as well. How many of us are, I'm going to include myself in this, how many of us are sharing our opinions, sharing our thoughts and feelings about things, spouting off with literally no evidence of facts and situations? All of us, right? If any of us, me included, are looking for social media or the news or any type of, I call all of it, it's all entertainment now. Any media company, meaning TV, radio, podcasts, all of this, if we're counting on that and depending on that as evidence, we're all fooling ourselves because there's so much manipulation and so much going on behind the scenes that has nothing to do with providing accurate evidence and information to the listeners or to the viewers. It's all about getting attention, writing headlines. I was in journalism and newspaper business a long time and it was all about, here's the story. And that was back in the days when journalism really was about who, what, where, when, why, and how. And we actually reported the facts, but we would look at those facts and we would find the juiciest headline possible. And we would sit and we would brainstorm because we knew the headline was the most important part of that article because nobody was going to read the article if they didn't get caught and hooked in by the headline. It's the same today only on, you know, a, a 10 million X steroids. There's so much information and so many things out there for us to look at. And it's all based on how can we get your attention and how can we think for you? So let's jump ahead to the barriers to, and, and this was very enlightening to me, given what's going on in the United States of America right now, and has been going on for a long time, several decades. It's not just happening now, it's just coming to a, a, uh, a head right now because we've got someone that's looking at saying, the evil needs to stop, we need to take care of this. And, and there's a whole lot of other people that are saying, absolutely positively, me included, we need to stop this, we need to get rid of the the corruption that has plagued many of our systems for a really long time. So often people are screaming and yelling, it's the system, it's, it's systemic racism, it's systemic um, poverty, it's systemic whatever, because they don't realize that it is not the system, 
It is the people that are allowed to run and manage those systems. They are the ones with the evil intentions. And just like anything else, it can be used for good or evil. All this, all these tools I'm teaching you, they can be used for good or they, making your life better, or they can be used for evil. Habits and rituals and things, can they be used for good and evil? Absolutely. There's right good rituals and habits, and there are, you know, satanic rituals and habits. You get to choose what you're going to participate in. So what are some of these barriers to critical thinking? This list, like I said, this was a very eye-opening list. I knew it, but to have it written down was just like, boom. All right, let's see. An over-reliance on feelings or emotions. Is the media trying to play on our feelings and emotions right now? Yep, have been for decades. That's why we have such a negative uh, view of life and a negative mentality is it has been brainwashed into us over decades uh, self-centered or societal cultural centered thinking uh, conf conformism dogma and peer pressure any of that going on in in at least America right now yeah have you been bullied online I have totally been bullied online and just for saying I didn't think rioting was okay yeah, and I mean, I stopped commenting then because I got literally so bullied online and badgered online. I'm like, I don't need this. It's not even up my alley. I just said that rioting when it's in your area is 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 frightening and unacceptable. Well, rioting anywhere, people, is unacceptable. If you're purporting crime or or harming other people, that is evil. I, I, I don't care who you are. We all know the difference between good and evil. We all know the difference between fair and unfair. We all know the difference between cheating and, and, and conniving and stealing and lying and corruption and fraud. We're all smarter than that. But when we get this self-centered, self-righteous, focused on emotion and fear, fear mongering is ridiculous in America right now. Never in my 60 years have I been afraid except in 2020 over stupid things. COVID-19, being called names, being bullied online, because I don't agree with the mainstream media. Uh, so the conformism, dogma, and peer pressure uh, are barriers to critical thinking, right? They're all designed intentionally, by the way, to make sure we're not thinking for ourselves. Uh, unconscious bias or selective perception. We all have that. It's built into our nature. We couldn't possibly um, feel, you know, look at and pay attention to everything. We have to have filters, and our filters are designed to protect us. But we want to make sure we're choosing what those filters are, not letting those filters be chosen for us. Uh, lack of detailed knowledge and wanting to know the answers without asking the questions. So we don't want to figure anything out for ourselves. We don't want to think about it. We just want you to tell us the answers. And there's a lot of people in America, obviously, who want people to just tell them the answers. So we watch mainstream media so we can just get a sound bite of what we should think. Instead of watching the whole speech or debate or document, you know, reading the documents for ourselves, we want somebody else to tell us what it means. Really, really scary behavior because we're giving away our personal power to other people and letting them tell us what we should think about what we think. If, if, if nothing else, watch an actual speech of what the president or, or vice, former Vice President Joe Biden say, watch the whole one yourself. And don't listen to the front end or back end conversation from any media outlets. Think for yourself and say, well, what does this mean? What did they say? What does this mean? What did they actually say? Versus letting the news media or any other outlet, either, either side of any argument, interpret for you and, and tell you what they said. Because I guarantee they're interpreting it for their audience, for their customers, for the people they want to serve. They're not interpreting it for the, the truth or the, the real picture or the facts or the real story. Uh, other ones, poor communication skills uh, or apathy. It, hey, I just don't care. I'm just, I don't care. I'm not going to, I don't care what this means. I don't, it doesn't mean anything to me. Um, closed mindedness is a barrier to critical thinking. Fear of being wrong or fear of being out of your comfort zone is a huge barrier to critical thinking. And um, lack of personal honesty. Guess what? People that are dishonest or evil or unethical don't care about critical thinking. They want everyone else to think the way they do or they need to shut them up. They need to shut them down. They need to bully. They need to badger. They need to threaten. They need to increase fear. They need to damage. They need to riot. They need to do whatever they can to shut anybody that doesn't agree with them down. 
Have we seen any of this in the media? Censorship by certain big media companies, organizations online? Of course we have. And we'll continue to see it until we say, enough, stop, we're not gonna take it anymore because this is America and we have the right to free speech. And that means we get to, we get to say on any side of the coin, not just one side of the coin. All right, well, what are 15 questions to encourage you to think critically? I actually got this from a professor because there are professors and teachers out there that want us to learn how to think for ourselves. Really the most valuable thing you can learn in college Nowadays especially, and any time, I'd say in the last 30 years, and you learn this yourself, they don't teach you, is to think critically, to understand what to do and what to believe about situations. How do you do that? You ask questions. Questions, I don't know if we've talked about that, but we will in the Get Up and Go Challenge in December about the power of questions. They are how we evaluate everything automatically. Our subconscious thinks, well, we think in pictures, but also in questions. It's always asking, what is this? What does this mean to me? What do I need to do about it? What do I think about it? Do I need to run? Do I need to, you know, kill it? Do I, the, you know, hierarchy of needs. So let's just go through these questions quick so I can stop talking about this and you can start thinking for yourself. Question one, how do you know that? Question two, how would your perspective be different if you were on the opposing side? Question three, how would you solve this problem? Focus on solutions. Second, question four, do you agree or disagree and why? Question five, why, why, why? If you ask a series of why questions and be open-minded to understand, you'll get a lot more information. Question six, how could we avoid this problem in the future? I feel like I'm taking an essay test in college. <laughs> Question seven, why does it matter? Question eight, what's another way to, looking, to look at this issue? What's another way to look at this issue? Question nine, can you give me an example? Question 10, how could it have ended differently? Question 11, when will we be able to tell if it worked? When will we be able to tell if it worked? How do you know if it worked? Question 12, why did you ask that question? Question 13, I've used that before. I've, I've People have said something on line to me and I'm like, I don't understand. I got some feedback on one of my videos, somebody who didn't like the filter I used and I'm like, huh? I don't understand, why, why did you ask that question? I don't get it. And the person came back with, they, they were saying something about I was advertising. Well, it turns out I was doing jet set the idiom and I had the Louis Vuitton symbol going across my face, which I just thought meant rich and something. And I didn't even think about it. I just picked it because it was kind of fun. And the guy went on into the, all these things and all the intent and, and why I was doing it. And I said, you know, you've obviously thought about this way more than I have. Sorry, I was just picking one because it looked fun and I wanted it for my video, you know, to get attention. So people watch your videos and, and learn what the idiom means. Uh, so why'd you ask that question? 13, who would be affected by this? Sometimes we forget to remember that what we say and do has implications and ramifications for other people besides ourselves. And sometimes we forget about that. Question 14, what can this story teach us about our own lives? And question 15, why is this a problem? So those are some, some questions that you can ask about almost any topic, anything, any subject. And if you, if you look for, for answers that are honestly true to you, you will get them. Um, I guess it, it just goes against the whole group think, mind think, being afraid, all these things that are being, you know, perpetrated on all of us, you know, me included. I'm on the internet every day creating videos like this and sharing them. And it is impossible to ignore all of the stuff that pops up just in America about COVID, elections, and, um, you know, other, other topics. It just, it automatically gets fed to us based on the algorithms by, you know, Google, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all of the sites that we go to, they have their own algorithms that serve us what they think we want to see. I don't think they're always right. I see a whole lot of stuff I don't want to see every day. I've given some feedback and said, how do I stop seeing about COVID? How do I stop seeing automatically first thing every day about politics? I don't want to see politics, COVID, or religion in the top of my feed as soon as I wake up in the morning as I get ready to do my videos. I don't want to see those things. Yet, they're served up with the media that's serving it slant and perspective and intention to do whatever they want to their audience, which usually involves getting them more likes or views or money in some way, shape, or form. It's all about the money. Uh, and so we need to we need to really think for ourselves. I, I will say this forever, probably. 
Think for yourself, think for yourself, think for yourself. That's what critical thinking means to me. It means I'm really going to ask the questions, even though it is it harder to, to read stuff and listen to the whole speech and, and ask your own questions. Well, what did he mean by that? What does that mean to me? How is that affecting me? How might that affect other people? What might that really cost? What is he or she not saying that I still have questions about? So that's my rant and raving about critical thinking today. I think it's a great topic. It's a great tool. And it ought to be in each and every one of our personal toolboxes. Because if it's not, what are we doing? We're giving away our personal power. We're giving away everything that we hold dear. Our freedom to other people. Because we're tired or lazy. And we don't want to actually think for ourselves. Secret. It doesn't really take any more mental energy to think for ourselves in a critical thinking way than it does to turn on the boob tube and just listen to someone else tell us how to think. Have an awesome day. Love to know your thoughts, opinions, questions about this topic. And I will see you December 1st. It's right around the corner for the final, fifth and final Get Up and Go 30 Plus Day Challenge to guarantee that we have better results after any change or challenge that we face than before we face that. So we come out better and unscathed, not always unscathed, sometimes we need to learn lessons and so we get a little skin knee uh, after any change or challenge than before it. We'd love to have you join us right here on the Get Up and Go Challenge page for that final challenge. It's free, it's always available, uh, but I'd love to have you be a part of it. Have an awesome day. I'll, of course, be sitting around with another no-nonsense November tool of the day. Bye. Oh, thank you.